So question number one, we want to simplify this expression. So anytime we're dealing with multiple parentheses like this, we want to start as far in as possible. So we have the curly brace, and we'll see that there's other stuff inside of this. The next thing you come across is the square brackets, and there's still parentheses inside of these. So that's where we should start, is with the most inner parentheses. So I can't combine x minus 1, but I can multiply through by this 8. That gives me 8x minus 8. And then I still have this plus 6. And then I can deal with the next parenthesis. I can't combine 4x and negative 1, but I can do 2 times 4x and 2 times negative 1. And then I still have the plus 6. So I got rid of the parentheses. And the next step will be to get rid of the brackets. First, we notice we can just combine some things. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Now let's get rid of the brackets. This first one doesn't have anything in front of it except for the next brace, so we can just ignore it. This second one has a negative sign in front of it, so we have to distribute that negative sign all the way through. Negative 8x minus 4. Now we can combine some things. 8x minus 8x is 0. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And then 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So that's as small as we can get on this one. So number two wants us to solve an equation. The first step in solving equations would be to clear fractions and decimals. We don't have any in this case, so we move to step two, which states to clear parentheses. So on the left, I have a negative 5x, and then negative 5 times 1. On the right, I have a negative 4x, and negative 4 times 2. The next step would be to combine like terms. 7 minus 5 is 2, minus 5x. 6 minus 8 is negative 2, minus 4x. The next step is to get our variables together. I have a negative 5x and a negative 4x. So in this case, I'm going to add 5x to both sides. On the left-hand side, they cancel, and I get a 2 equal to. On the right-hand side, negative 4 plus 5 would be 1, so I have plus x. We then want to move our constants over, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So on the left-hand side, I get 4. And on the right-hand side, the 2's cancel, and I get x. So in this case, 4 is equal to x. 3 asks us to solve another equation. Typically, the first step would be to clear these fractions, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and multiply through and clear the parentheses. So 1 8, or 1 fourth times 8x. Whenever you're multiplying a fraction in a number, we divide by the denominator and multiply by the numerator. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, times 1 is 2. Negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5, times 1 is negative 5. On the right, 15 divided by 3 is 5, times 1 is 5. And then 15, or negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2, times 1. Our next step would be to combine our variables. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides to do this. So now on the left-hand side, they cancel, and I get negative 5 is equal to 3x minus 2. We need to move the constants to the other side, so I will add 2. That gives me negative 3 is equal to 3x. Finally, we want to get rid of the number in front of x, so we will divide both sides by 3. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1, and on the right-hand side we have x. So number 4, during the storm, the number m of miles away a lightning bolt strikes can be estimated by first counting the number t of seconds between the bolt of lightning and the associated clap of thunder, and then dividing by 5. So the first step is to translate this into a relationship.
So we have the number of miles. Can be, anytime you see can be, would be, is, was, that should indicate an equal sign. We then count the number of seconds and divide by five. This can also be written as m equal to t over five. For part b, we want to solve this for t in terms of m. So we want to get t by itself. The first thing we do when we solve an equation would be to clear the fractions and decimals. So here, I'm going to multiply everything by 5. On the left, I get 5m, and on the right, I get t. So now I have t equal to something involving m. So we've solved it in for t. So part C then wants to know if we hear it, or if the lightning strike is 2.5 miles away, how many seconds will it be? So in this case, we know what m is. We're looking for t. So 5 times 2.5 is equal to t. And 5 times 2.5 is 12.5. So it would be 12.5 seconds. So number 5, we have this equation that can be used to predict the approximate average hourly earnings E of a U.S. production worker where E is the number of years after 1995. So we want to solve this for T in terms of E. So the first thing we do is we want to solve this thing for T. Anytime we're solving, we want to get T by itself. So right now we have this 11.94. So let's subtract that from both sides. The left-hand side becomes E minus 11.94. The right-hand side becomes 0.49T. We then want to get rid of the number in front of T, and we do this by dividing. So divide both sides by 0.49. So the left becomes E minus 11.94 divided by 0 0.49 and the right hand side becomes t. For part b, we want to figure out what years the approximate average hourly earnings will be at least $15. So for part b, we want to know for what years the approximate average hourly earnings will be at least $15. So this time we want to know T, we want to know years, and we know E, we know what the earnings are. So we're going to use part A. We have our earnings are 15 minus 11.94 divided by 0 0.49 is equal to T. So the first step would be the subtraction on top. 15 minus 11.94, which is 3.06. So we have 3.06 divided by 0 0.49 is equal to t. The next step would be the division. So 3.06 divided by 0 0.49 is approximately 6.2. So this will happen for 6.2 years after 1995. Number six, a square plywood platform has a perimeter which is 10 times the length of a side decreased by 30. So find the length of a side. So the perimeter of a square is four times the length of the side. And this also tells me that the perimeter is 10 times the length of a side decreased by 30. So we should have that 10s minus 30, which is the perimeter, is equal to 4s, since that's how you find the perimeter of a square. We want to get the s's together, so I'll subtract 10s. That gives me negative 30 is equal to minus success. 
dividing both sides by negative 6 gives me 5 equal to s. Number 7. Kayla has a rectangular garden with a perimeter of 48 feet. If the length of her garden is 6 feet less than twice the width, find the dimension of her garden. So in this case we have a rectangular garden and we know what the perimeter is, which is typically found by 2L plus uh, 2W. So we also know that the length is 6 feet less than twice the width. So we have a 6, less than means we're going to be subtracting 6, and then twice, so 2 times, the width. So here I have 2 times 2w minus 6 plus 2w. Getting rid of the parentheses gives me 4w minus 12 plus 2w. Adding the w's gives me 6w minus 12. I then want to get the constants on the same side, so I'll add 12 to both sides. That gives me 60 equal to 6w. And dividing both sides by 6 gives me 10 equal to w. So, so far what I found is that the width is equal to 10. I still need to find the length. Well, we know that it's twice the width minus 6. So this is 20 minus 6, so the length is 14. Number 8. Suppose that your first four test scores in your psychology class are 81, 70, 92, and 68. What is the lowest you can scroll on your fifth test if you want to have an average of at least 80? So to find an average, we start by adding things up. We have an 81 plus 70 plus 92 plus 68 plus our last test, divided by a total of five tests. And we want this to be equal to 80. Our first step here is just going to be to add these up to simplify things. 81 plus 70 plus 92 plus 68 gives us 311. So 311 plus x divided by 5 is equal to 80. To get rid of fractions, we're going to multiply everything by the denominator. 311 plus x over 5 is just 311 plus x. And 80 times 5 is 400. We then get our constants on the same side, so subtract 311. And we get that x is equal to 89. So we need a score of 89 on the last test. Number 9. The office manager of an election campaign office needs to print 5,000 postcards. It costs 2 cents to print one large postcard and 1 cent to print one small postcard. If $85 is allocated for printing postcards, how many of each type of postcard can be printed? So let's start writing our equations. We know we have small and large postcards, and we know that together these should be equal to 5,000. We also know the cost. So small postcards cost one cent, and large postcards cost two cents. And this should be equal to the total amount we have. So I'm going to do this using the elimination method. I'm going to start by leaving the first equation alone. And I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 100. So 0 0.01 times negative 100 is negative 1. 0 0.02 times negative 100 is negative 2. And 85 times negative 100 is negative 8,500. When I add these up, the s's cancel. I get negative l equal to negative 3,500. 
dividing both sides by negative 1 gives me that I need 3,500 large postcards. We also need to know how many small postcards. Well, we do know that together we should have a total of 5,000. So if I have the small plus my 3,500 large, this should be equal to 5,000. Subtracting 3,500 from both sides gives me that I should have 1,500 small postcards. So number 10 has three parts. So the first thing we want to know is to identify the y-intercept and explain the meaning. Well, in this case, the y-intercept is 0, 0. This thing starts right at the very bottom corner. Explain this meaning. Well, this means the train leaves at noon. So 1 indicates 1 p.m. Since 0 p.m. doesn't make sense, it's an hour before 1, which would be noon. For part B, we want to find the rate of change. So this is just the slope. And you can see we have two points that are bold, which are easily identifiable. identifiable. 2, 100, and then 4, 200. So here, we want to find the slope. So if you remember, the formula for slope, we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 200 minus 100 all over 4 minus 2. So this is 100 over 2. So my rate of change would be 50. Part C wants us to explain the meaning, and this just means that we're going to be traveling at 50 miles per hour.